Hey guys, welcome to my review of the Meteor F Mark 8 Reaper. This plane is an 8.0 BR British Premium Aircraft. It can only ob be obtained via the store in a bundle costing 45 British pounds, which is roughly 50 euros or 57 dollars. It has a 642% RP booster, as well as a 720% Silver Line booster. It is a ground attack variant of the Mark 8 Meteor we already have in game only with reinforced wings and a much larger ordnance payload. Being powered by two Rolls-Royce Derwent 8 engines, you have great thrust and acceleration. The engines, along with the aerodynamic fuselage, also give you a great energy retention. You also have great turning and rolling abilities, as well as fairly powerful flaps, especially at low speeds. This is due to being a clipped wing uh, meteor variant. This plane can do pretty much everything, with the exception of being top end straight line speed. This jet isn't slow per se, but is slow compared to its contemporaries, especially with up to year to 9.0s. You will see quite a lot of thunder jets in this plane, which can just outrun you. This plane excels at defensive flying and energy fighting whilst being fairly able to fulfil a boom and zoom playstyle, giving an energy advantage. Like I say, notable opponents will be the F-84G thunder jets as well as the G91 pre-series that are in pretty much every up tier you'll see. 9.0s are pretty hard to fight as well, MiG-15 bis is out fun in this point. So that was a quick summation, if you want to stay along for the rest of the overview, we'll go into greater depth of the use of this plane, how I fight it, how I feel about it, and then at the end we'll go over the pricing. See you in a soon. So this is the extended overview, just going to go into a little bit more depth of the history and how I fly it stuff like that might not be everyone's cup of tea but if you just want to uh, know a bit bit more about the plane it might be for you so the mark 8 reaper was simply just a ground attack variant of the f mark 8 reaper we already have in game it was a single prototype and didn't see mass production the model in game is different to the real life reaper although the accounts on the actual reaper do differ some sources claim the reaper had a rocket assisted takeoff or rato while some claim it had a 52mm gun mounted under the fuselage. None of the uh, none of these are represented in game. Like I said, the in-game in Reaper just has hard points for a lot more explosives, bombs, rockets than the in-game one already. I also mentioned in the introduction that the price of this plane, which is a pack, you can only get it off the store, is 49.99 euros, 45 British pounds, or 57 American dollars. For this price you do get the play as well as 2,000 Golden Eagles and 15 days of premium. So not a bad deal, but it is quite a lot of money for one sitting. In the United Kingdom this is roughly 5.5 hours on minimum wage. Like I say I'll give you my opinion on that price at the end of the video. So the strength and wings of the Reaper give it a lot more hard points and you can carry a lot more ordnance. If you don't take any ordnance, then the hard points can be removed. This is different to the in-game MiG-15 bis-ish, which if you don't choose to take any rockets, the hard points still stay. This acts as a source of drag, so the removing of the hard points is very good. It means you can basically just use it as a pure fighter. So you can use it as either a fighter or a ground attacker, depending on which is you prefer. You retain the four Hispano Mark fires as the other meters are in-game. However, you do get access to, like I say, a lot more uh, weapons, particularly 23 RP3 rocket, 24 RP3 rocket. Sorry, this is arguably the most effective loadout for ground attack, as it gives you 12 individual shots. You also have the ability to carry four 1,000 pound bombs, which can be useful to destroy mini bases in RRB. These do drop two at a time, though, which makes them a bit ineffective for going after like pillboxes or heavy tanks, that sort of thing. So I would go for mini bases if you are um, trying to uh, ground attack. The Spanos are pretty good for primary weapons. You're, they're all mounted in the nose. You have four of them, so if they do hit, they do, they, they're all. If you hit with one, you're basically going to hit with all of them, basically, which is pro pretty much the main issue with Hispanos in the uh, well, the rank four points like the um, C Griffin, not C Griffins, C Furies. They're just quite far out on the wing, so that people have problems aiming them. But you do have trouble shooting enemies from behind. You've got quite a low velocity, 
quite high velocity when compared to uh, like German cannons, but compared to 50 cals, they're very slow. They're quite hard to aim at uh, rear aspect targets, but if the enemy's turning and you, you can get your nose on them, then you just blow them out of the sky. They're, I really like these guns. Especially suits the Ametius playstyle being a turner. You get you can get your enemy into a turn fight or an energy stalling fight, you can just blow them away. The main belts of the uh, Mark V Espanos are the Ur uh, target belts. These don't include any tracer rounds, meaning new players may struggle. Mainly due to the very fast and brief opportunities of firing that jet battles jet battles usually consist of. But if you've come up the British line then you should be used to them by now. The way I play this jet is to essentially play it as a boom and zoomer for the first part of the game, and then as the game progresses and the player's alive drop, you start to play it a bit more of a turn energy fighter, or being a bit more risky, can you bleed your speed? Like I say, turn fighting and getting into prolonged 1v1 fights in the early game will just get you killed quickly by another person diving into the fight, which will make you angry because you don't get a satisfaction of good dog fights. But I tend to take off and turn 45 degrees from the enemy airfield whilst keeping the plane level pretty much at 0 degrees so I can build up speed. Then when I hit 750 to 800 km an hour, put it into a 15 degree climb and get some altitude. I recommend to turn back in towards the enemy when you see the third, when you see the, our team spot the first enemy. Now, I would use this game when the enemy team is attacking your friendlies, when there's a bit of a fur ball, this is a great way to uh, help out your teammates to get some off the six. And you can essentially play it as a boom and zoomer while they're turning with your enemy, with, with your ally. Sorry, you can just go up and down, up and down. With great uh, energy retention. The biggest lesson you need to learn in uh, the meteor, I'd say, is just because you have the ability to turn well doesn't mean you always should do it. Taking your shot and then extending, it's like a boom and zoom playstyle is probably best. Just because if you force your enemy to turn then in jets they've no way got enough energy to follow you so. Boom, zoom out of there then re-engage and you're pretty much untouchable if it's a uh, 1v1 and they're on low energy. But as I say in the late game, you can afford to sacrifice some air speed in order to dogfight. Mainly because you know he's, he doesn't have a teammate that's about to swoop in and attack you. You do have great energy retention stall characteristics, so don't be afraid to energy fight in the vertical if you're quite um, if you know for certain that he has less energy than you. If you do have less energy than an enemy, simply use your great turn rate to uh, make them overshoot. You do, like I say, your great Derwent 8 um, engines, you can accelerate pretty quick in this, so you can afford to uh, get low on energy can regain it pretty easily. Nothing like a MiG-15 or anything, but for 8.0 it's very good. Speaking of being 8.0, you can be up tier to 9.0, which will be very, which will be a big struggle. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, it is a bit shit. However, 8.0 battle rating is pretty busy. You've got loads of different jets in 8.0, and you very rarely get up tiered. 9.0 jets can do pretty much everything better than you, and you will face missiles. The missiles aren't really a threat because you can just easily outturn them. You can see your missiles at even as low as 7.7 off in this thing, so you've got to be watch out. The German Seahawk and the American Cougar, they both carry AA at low levels. But as I just said, as long as you have a little bit of energy, you can over-G the missiles easy. It's worth noting that if you try an energy fight, with, with if you try an energy fight jets that have missiles, they may just shoot the missile at you as you go past them. So I'd learn your enemies, learn their strengths if they have jets. Either try and... If it's a one-on-one -on -one, then go vertical, make him bleed his energy at least if he's going to fire a missile. But just try and bait them into firing missiles in situations where they'll never get a hit. So we'll now go on to some gameplay followed by a final conclusion. Alright, so we're on our first game. We're on that Balasa fucking French map. It's on with the British coast and Dover and stuff. We've climbed a bit, all the enemies are below us. Chasing our friendly meteor. And when you get the guns on target like that, they do just blow planes away. They are great guns in deflection shots. 
like I said earlier, they do leave a bit to desire when you're trying to chase, as we'll see later. But we've got the pick of the crop, really, in terms of uh, which jets we want to engage. As you can see, there's plenty of Seahawks, all of them are carrying missiles, which is a, a bit annoying, but... Especially at low tier, when the speed advantage isn't as massive as it is now. Missiles really do ruin the game, they should have been, just been left to high tiers. But as you can see, like pretty much all the cannons in the game, when you go in at this speed, it's pretty hard to aim. Just because the velocity of the rounds are going so slow, as well as the jets going so fast, so it, it equals out to about the rounds are doing about 200 kilometers an hour relative to uh, the, the enemy jet. But I don't really want to be going into Einstein's uh, theorems in this review. But we finish off the Seahawk. And we're just going to extend here, put it into a nice 20 degree climb. The enemies didn't turn, they didn't uh, they didn't follow us, sorry. So we're going to turn all that energy we've got, put it back into altitude. Basically the same as a boom and zoom attack. Or boom and zoom um, theory. So we put it into a bit of a steeper climb here, just to get a bit more altitude, then we turn back in. And we're going to keep the nose straight. Recover our speed in the horizontal. So, coming in like this, it gives you more time to think, more time to observe what's happening. You can see most of our team have been uh, destroyed. It's me and a friendly meteor. Our friendly vampire just got uh, taken out. We've got a few Seahawks and a 262. I think there's a Thunder Jet as well for good measure. Thunder Jet, I can't catch them. Seahawks, I'm faster. ME262, I out turn and out, uh, can out energy fight him pretty easily. Now, this Seahawk, I think he's just stored himself and now he's trying to recover speed. Don't think he sees me coming. But he's gone. Now, this Seahawk's going to evade very well. He rolls one way, then he pulls up and rolls the other way. I'm going too fast to compress. Now if he had a missile here, he could have locked on and fired. That's why I did it into a very sharp very sharp climb. I just wanted to get away from his missile if he fired it. But I think he's run out at this point. If that thunder jet... It's true that the thunder jet is a lot faster than you in a straight line. However, he's very heavy. He'll lose all that speed if he goes into a vertical. So I was pretty confident I would be, I'd be fine going into it high vertical there, but I wouldn't recommend it, especially if your energy levels are pretty similar. But coming out of a dive, we are going to be faster than the Thunder Jet, it's the same as pretty much any jet that's coming out of a dive and you're not going to outrun it. And we're back to our rear aspect shooting again. Now the Seahawk makes himself a bigger target here, but he's got four 20 mils, I've got 420 mils. It's not worth it. I've got all the advantages here. It's not worth throwing it throwing away a game just because you want to end a head on. You would have had guns on me there. He probably didn't have a a long firing window, but he would have had a, a chance. I didn't want to risk it. Now this G91R comes up, he's trying to stall with me. So I go vertical, then put it into a horizontal to gain more speed, then go into a vertical again. Whether he doesn't take the bait and he dives away. And G91 in a dive is a lot faster than you, it's a more modern airframe. It's a bit sketchy that the uh, the meteors fight these jet, fight those jets. That's a swept wing aircraft, so it has a much better high speed uh, characteristics. Now I fall victim to my own experience here. I thought that you see me do, you saw me do a quick shot and then break off. I thought that Seahawk was going much faster. He wasn't, so I may have been able to get him in a head on. We do manage to get him as he's trying to dive out. And again, just put it into a vertical. 
I c I'm pretty much untouchable at this point in the game by these jets. They don't have the energy. They can't regain the energy with me consistently uh, harassing them, forcing them to turn. You can see I'm counting how many enemies are left on the team, and there's more than two. And that's when the uh, local G91 comes and uh, ruins the party. Now he's in the E-Rex clan, it's a, I think it's a mainly arcade clan, but this guy seems pretty good. So I've no idea how to fight G91s really. I know the ant is good at turning. I did try and get a shot on there. Now here, I should have just dove away. Instead I'm following up. I took his bait, he's going to stall me out. I think now I realise I'm going to get killed, so I put landing and try to dive away. Should have had my uh, landing flaps closed by now. But I should have turned back into him a lot sooner. And I didn't think he'd be able to get his nose around that quick. I'm taken completely by surprise here. And he damages my uh, fuselage. So that's pretty much me gone at this point. I've lost one engine. And all my, my fuselage is now creating a lot of drag. But you are pretty competitive in terms of energy fighting and boom and zooming. You don't really have the engine power to be a... You don't have the engine power to be like a like a muscle car, into, like in the same way it's fast because of power. This is more like a... I don't know how to describe it. Like a very sleek airframe, so you just maintain that speed once you get it. You do have good engines, it's not like... Hunter engines, like just pure thrust. But sadly, we lost that game over France. But my team did collapse, and I was left the only one left. So I don't feel too bad. I think it demonstrated some good fighting, some good defensive um, capabilities. I really do enjoy this jet for its um. It's just a pure joy to fly. Just you can defensive fly, you can boom and zoom. You just can't uh, outrun enemies really. Now, this French jet, I don't know what it is. Did he manage to get a crit on him? I was gonna, originally going to go for that Meteor, but he was going too fast. So I'd have compressed and probably ripped. Well, you wouldn't have ripped, but I would have missed. So I got a crit. And as you can see, I'm using the same tactics as the last game. Taking a shot, extending, climbing, then turning back in. All those jets are in a furball. They, they keep on turning. They're bleeding all their energy. Not one of those jets has enough energy to catch me as I come out of a boom and zoom. So, the two other jets turn into me, so I can't really do anything. That thunder jet extends, I won't catch him in a straight line. And the LA-15 is a notable target, but I can't get a shot on this pass, so I'll put it into a vertical. Now, not only am I being... Basically, my red text will be a. Uh, the enemy team won't be able to see me because I'm in the clouds. I can still see them because my teammates spot him. But this Thunder Jet clearly doesn't know I'm coming in. Pretty sloppy shooting from me. I'm going quite fast here. You can see my nose is a little bit uh, unwilling to turn. That's a nice little double kill. Let down a little bit by my aim on the Thunder Jet. But double kill nonetheless. Now I didn't want to uh, manoeuvre here. I've got a lot of speed, don't want to waste it. But I put it into a vertical loop to get on this uh, LA-15. Now the LA-15 is pretty much a boom and zoom jet. Doesn't really turn that well. It is a swept wing design. But it's going to give me a lot of trouble. You can hear from the audio there that there's now two jets engaging me. But I'm kind of panicking a little bit here because I was trying to dodge that uh, thunder jet as well as engage this LA-15. That would have been a nice kill if the uh, guns actually hit. I did manage to get a kill. I did get a hit but didn't manage to get the kill. 
put it into a little bit of a dive trying to get my airspeed back up. Now he has 23mm guns, a pretty low velocity so it's quite hard for him to aim. So just slight little movements and it's pretty effective defence. But that Thunder Jet, he's got a very high velocity 50s. It's much harder to uh, evade. You can just basically just spray at you. But I'm far more manoeuvrable than the LA-15. Yeah, I've managed to reverse him here. He does still have more energy than me. And I can't really one-on-one -on -one fight when I've got from the jet behind me, obviously. But AA there stuck out my uh, right engine. I'm look very lucky not to die there. So the LA-15 slow. He's not got enough energy to evade anymore. Get a crit on his right wing. There. Managed to get him as he's about to crash. But again, you, like I said, this is a very multi role fighter. You can defensive fly, you can energy fight, you can boom and zoom. I just love it. It's kind of like the Spitfire uh, Mark 16, the FR clip wing. It's just a good all-rounder for everything. So this is a bit later on in the game. I turned off my recording. As you can see, the Kuka goes head on with me. And then you can't see it in this clip because Gaijin fucked up the replay, but I do manage to blow the wing off that Meteor as well. So if you're a competent shot, the 420s in the nose of the Meteor are perfectly capable of head-ons. The Burr Belts do do damage. And they are monsters if you get them in deflections. But a pretty sad ending to this game. We're just going to slowly hit the water. Just left us in for a bit of dramatic effect. We can just see how uh, we aren't really losing any air speed without any engines. You have a very good chassis. Or fuselage, sorry. Now I'm going to go on to some of the ground attack capabilities. So this is halfway through the game. I think there's one uh, TU4 left. I think it's not really relevant, but I've been out as a fighter. I've got a kill on a Canberra. I've come back and landed because uh, the last guy's climbing to space basically. So I decided to try out the um, the ground attack capability. So we've got the 23 rockets. And we're going to go after some uh, medium tanks. So if you look at the second uh, line down, you want to fire it there at about 5 kilometers. That was a bit sloppy of me, but... This is my first game using these RP3 rockets on a jet, so... This could be a... Imagine this is you taking your very first shots. But from what I can tell, the RP3 rockets, if you hit anything, it's going to destroy it. They are very powerful. That was a bit low. almost crashed but we'll uh, pretend you didn't see that but you have 24 rockets which is 12 sh uh, 12 individual shots you see it's not bad if you get if you manage to get tw well say you manage to destroy six with those that's it's a lot of rp the rp3 rockets do have quite a lot of drop off compared to um like the American Hydra or the Mighty Mouse missiles, but you do have um, eight on either wing, and then an additional eight on the central fuselage. So when you're down to the last eight rounds, they are. You don't really have to aim to the side, obviously, because they're mounted on the middle, which is quite good. See here, just nice easy shot. It's, it's a bit ineffective in a tank battles just because the modern day AA will just tear you apart, you aren't a fast jet. But I think this is a great jet for ground pounding at the end of the games. I think it's just a great all round jet. I think we're going to miss this RP3, but as you can see it's pretty close. Any old person can use this. So in conclusion, the £45 price tag is a hefty price to pay in one sitting. If you do want to learn jets, then I do, I do recommend this plane. 
especially if you like the British tech tree. The large ordnance you're able to carry makes this jet playable by all play styles in both air and tank RB, as well as, well as the great nose mounted cannons with great air belts. This means this is both a great ground attacker and all round fighter. All aspects of the Reaper's flight performance are great. The top speed leaves something to desired, but in my opinion the, top, the lack of top end speed is irrelevant as this isn't the main way you will fight enemies. Instead, using your great turning ability and great vertical energy retention to perform manoeuvres to drain your opponent's energy. So what other options are there for British premiums at rank 5? Well, there isn't any, so bit of a shit situation. However, if you purely wanted Talisman and Jet to grind RP, but this does mean you won't get the enhanced silver line booster of premium planes, then the in-game Meteor F Mark 8 G41K may be a good option. After all, it is essentially just a clone of the Reaper, just without the missiles, uh, just without the rockets and bombs. Another good choice would be the Meteor Mark 3. This is a BR70 jet. I would say the Mark 8 Meteor is more competitive at 8.0 than the Mark 3 is at 7.0. The Mark 3 Meteor sees the Hortons and the ME264, ME262 spam for, sorry, I think it's a lot easier at the 8.0, it's a lot easier to fight at 8.0 in the uh, Mark 8s than it is at the Mark 3s. I personally love the Reaper, it's my most played plane and the plane I have the most kills in. You've seen from the gameplay that it's an absolute joy to fly defensively in and the lessons you learn being defences will help in all other trees and all other trees and planes in the game. If you have the money, this is well worth it for people who love the British Tech Tree. If you are new to the British line, the Wyvern or Hellcat may be better jet, uh, may be better planes to start, in my opinion. But for me, there can only be one favourite British premium, and it's the F Mark 8 Reaper. I hope you enjoyed this video. I always have fun flying this jet, and I'll see you in the next one.